Hey guys, I'm here to talk about the human digestive system. We humans are typically omnivores. This means we consume animals and plants. We must eat in order to survive. Nutrition needs to be balanced in order to balance consumption, storage, and use of food. First off, a human's diet needs to provide an adequate source of essential nutrients, which are preassembled organic molecules and minerals. Here's some examples of essential nutrients. Fatty acids, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals. These guys do good things like serving as substrates, coenzymes, and cofactors in biosynthetic reactions. Now we are going to discuss how these essential nutrients enter the body. By eating this little muffin, I am going to show you how the body breaks down nutrients in four main stages, and we are going to follow the muffin through the journey through the body. Stage one, ingestion. This is the act of eating or feeding. Stage two, digestion. When food is broken down into molecules small enough for the body to absorb. Stage three, animal cells take up small molecules such as amino acids and simple sugars. And last but not least, stage four, elimination. When undigested material passes through the digestive system. There are many organs specialized for food processing, like the alimentary canal and accessory glands that keep food going through the body. Let's follow this bite of muffin through my alimentary canal. The oral cavity is where it all begins. The teeth mash up and grind the food. The salivary glands are then triggered by the presence of food to send saliva through the ducts of the oral cavity. Now saliva has some key functions. Besides being that gross stuff that comes out when you spit, it has some pretty important functions. It contains the enzyme amylase, which hydrolyzes stark and glycogen into smaller polysaccharides and the disaccharide maltose. Saliva also protects the oral cavity, containing mucus, which lubricates food for easier swallowing. The tongue is the next component of the oral cavity. It detects what tastes good and what doesn't by the taste buds, and the muscles of the tongue form the food into a shape acceptable for swallowing. My tongue right now is forming a bolus of muffin. What's a bolus, you ask? A bolus is a ball of saliva, muffin, and stuff that you make with your teeth and tongue so it can go down your alimentary canal easier. My tongue is pushing the bolus into the pharynx or throat region, out the back of my oral cavity. The pharynx leads to the esophagus, which connects to the next destination of the muffin, to the stomach. It also connects to the windpipe, but we don't want to go there and we don't want the food to go there. Guided by the movements of the larynx, a swallowing reflex directs each bolus into the entrance of the esophagus. Thank God that when we swallow, a flap of cartilage covers my vocal cords and the opening between them so that the food doesn't go into my lungs. Now the bolus is in the esophagus, where it will empty out into the stomach. The stomach is a very important organ. It stores the food and begins the breakdown of proteins. Did you know that the stomach can hold about two liters of food and fluid? Now we're going to learn about the stomach and its essential secretions. The stomach secretes the components of a digestive fluid called gastric juice. Gastric juice is contained in the gastric gland. Gastric juice serves an important function in the process of chemical digestion of nutrients. The first component is hydrochloric acid. 
Hydrochloric acid destroys the bonds between the cells of meat and plant material. The hydrochloric acid is secreted in the parietal cells. The high concentration of hydrochloric acid is what causes the acidity of about two of the gastric juice. Did you know that a pH that low can dissolve iron nails? The low pH denatures the protein in food. Denature, fancy word for unfold. When the proteins in food are denatured, their peptide bonds are exposed. Now the second component is the enzyme protease. Protease is a protein digesting enzyme called pepsin. Pepsin is produced in the chief cells. Pepsin works by attacking the exposed peptide bonds from the denaturation that occurred before, and when the peptide bonds are broken, it cleaves proteins into smaller polypeptides. This is basically how protein is digested in our stomachs. One may ask, why doesn't hydrochloric acid and pepsin eat away at the stomach's lining? Well, the answer is simple. Mucus, which obviously come from the mucus cells, lubricate and protect the cells lining the stomach. Also, new cells are made every three days to make up for the cells that were corroded away from the acidic material in the stomach. Now, let's talk about the physical aspect of the way things are in the stomach. Keyword, peristalsis. Peristalsis is the alternating waves of contraction and relaxation in the smooth muscles lining the alimentary canal. The little muffin that I ate is now being churned into a nutrient-rich, acidic, brothy, gross thing called chyme. The churning and peristaltic contractions are what pushes the chyme into the small intestine. This usually takes place two to six hours after you eat. There's a sphincter that connects the stomach and the small intestine that regulates passage into the small intestine. One squirt at a time enters the small intestine through the sphincter. Most of the muffin's macromolecules are hydrolyzed in the small intestine. The small intestine can be 20 feet long in humans and is the longest compartment of the alimentary canal. The first 25 centimeters or so of the small intestine is called the duodenum. In the duodenum, the chyme from the stomach mixes with digestive fluids from the gallbladder, pancreas, and liver, and also mixes with the gland cells of the intestinal wall itself. Pancreatic secretions in the small intestine aid chemical digestion by producing bicarbonate. The bicarbonate functions to neutralize the acidity of the chyme. The liver, on the other hand, produces bile which is essential to the digestion of fats and other lipids. Bile contains emulsifiers, which aid in the absorption of lipids. Bile is stored in the gallbladder. Let's talk about the secretions in the lining of the small intestine itself. The epithelial layer of the duodenum has a lot of digestive enzymes. Some of these enzymes are secreted into what is called the lumen of the duodenum, and some of them are bound to the surface of the actual epithelial cells themselves. Now the muffin, or should I say just a gross mixture of chyme and digestive juices, moves along the small intestine. Most of the grunt work of digestion is done in the duodenum, but the next destination is the last two sections of the intestine, the jejunum and the ileum. This is where our nutrients are going to be absorbed. To reach the essential body tissues, nutrients in the lumen of the small intestine must first cross the lining of the alimentary canal. The nutrients must move on through the lining of the small intestine slash alimentary canal. The villi, finger-like projections, have microvilli on top of them, other finger-like projections, which facilitate the transport and increase the rate of nutrient absorption. The nutrients need to cross through the epithelial cells. As you may know from chapter 5, things move across the surface of cells by diffusion. Diffusion can be either active or passive. Most of the nutrients leave the small intestine through the bloodstream, but 
triglyceride, a type of fat, leaves the digestive system on a different path. The triglycerides are subject to enzymatic hydrolysis. An enzyme called lipase breaks down these triglycerides down to a fatty acid and a monoglyceride. Though some glycerol and fatty acids might go into the capillaries, after diffusing into the epithelial cells, monoglycerides and fatty acids turn back into triglycerides. The triglyceride is coated with phospholipids, cholesterol, and proteins, forming a water-soluble globule called chylomicrons. When exiting the intestine, chylomicrons enter the lacteals, which are vessels at the core of each villus. In exiting the small intestine, the lacteals will connect the chylomicrons to the lymphatic system and to the large veins, which eventually lead to the heart. As we reach the end of the road, we hit the end of the alimentary canal, where elimination occurs. Elimination starts in the large intestine, which consists of the colon, the cecum, and the rectum. The colon leads to the rectum and the anus. The cecum is important for fermenting ingested materials from plants and animals. The cecum connects to the appendix, which in humans is not useful. Feces is the waste produced by the digestive system. As it becomes increasingly solid, it moves down the large intestine and colon by peristalsis. The last portion of the large intestine is the rectum, where the feces is stored until they can be disposed. That's all for now about the digestive system.